right, guys. It is a hot, sticky, feeling like a wet bulb day there. We got us a wet bulb day there in upstate New York in early June. That would be Tuesday. I don't know where we are. June 8th, 2021. Up here in Ithaca, New York in a steam bath. I feeling more like Florida in mid-August than New York in early June. I guess it's, I heard it was 96 degrees in Burlington, Vermont yesterday and in the, in it in the 90s in Minneapolis, Minnesota and good Lord and I, uh, anyway, I have, uh, been out giving myself heat stroke in a hernia building a stone pathway up the hill. So I'm just now checking in uh, with the good old mainstream media. So I'm going to let you draw your own dots. We're going to pick out three stories here off today's mainstream media. Uh, and again, uh, let's all figure out together what could be the dots connecting these three. We're going to start many versions of this. This is CBS News, News version. Mega drought depletes system that provides water to 40 million people. Scientists are calling it a mega drought brought on by climate change. The latest U.S. drought monitor map shows large areas of the southwest are now exceptionally dry. The worst category. And that's taking a dramatic toll on the Colorado River system that provides water to 40 million people in seven states. And uh, you know, I've been having this story since I first came down the Doomosphere in 2008. We hear this story year after year after year that uh, all of these water rationing plans and how 40 million people aren't going to have enough water to drink or irrigate their crops. And uh, so far, you know, they, they come right up to the wall and somehow manage to get out in the 11th hour. Will this be the year? Right now, the opening week in June, um, Lake Mead is uh, at 37% capacity, 37% capacity. There, I guess there's no more snowpack. Uh, what the little bit of snowpack there was is already gone. There's no more water coming is what they're saying. So we will see how all of this plays out. Uh, Yes, this part of the Colorado River is a crucial water supply for Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Southern California and makes the vast agricultural land of the Southwest possible. There you go. Good Lord. I'm sure you've seen these these pictures. So, uh... We're going to... Go back, what is it? I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of years from the conversation. This is by Andrea Duffy from the Colorado State University. What the Ottoman Empire can teach us about the consequences of climate change and how drought can uproot people and fuel warfare. So this sounds a lot like uh, John Michael Greer's conversation from a few days ago, although I don't think John uh, is factoring in climate change. Uh, all right, imagine this. In the late 16th century, hundreds of bandits on horseback stormed through the countryside of Ottoman Anatolia raiding villages, inciting violence and destabilizing the Sultan's grip 
on power 400 years later and a few hundred miles away in the former Ottoman territory of Syria, widespread protests escalated into a bloody civil war in 2011 that persists to this day. These dark episodes in Mediterranean history share key features that offer a warning for the future. Both forced, both forced waves of people from their homes, both were rooted in politics and had dramatic political consequences, and both were fueled by extreme weather associated with climate change. And then Andrea, she is an environmental historian, and she breaks all this down looking at the Ottoman Empire uh, and, and draw, comparing what happened there to what's getting ready to happen here. You will not believe this. We live in an area of global warming largely due to unsustainable human practices generally known as the Anthropocene. This era is widely considered to have emerged in the 19th century. Uh, but, uh, according to Andrea, I don't know, you can go, but you can go back a lot farther than that. Um, talking about how much of the land traditionally was used for cultivating grain or herding sheep and goats provided a critical food source for the population as for the local population as well as residents of the bustling Ottoman capital, Istanbul, then called Constantinople. Uh, then she talks about how just a fairly minor climatic interruption set the whole place um, and how just the whole thing, the whole ball of wax came undone. And um, you can just see all the par parallels here, but we're going to jump ahead uh, to today. And what does all of this have to do with today? And more importantly, I guess tomorrow, and you've probably heard me mention this term, threat multiplier, climate change as a threat multiplier. Um, 400 years later, environmental stress coincided with social unrest to launch Syria into an enduring and devastating civil war. This conflict emerged in the context of political oppression and the Arab Spring movement and on the tail end of one of Syria's worst droughts in modern history. And again, you know, trying to uh, disentangle all of this, uh, the magnitude of the environment's role in the Syrian civil war is difficult to gauge because, as happened during the Ottoman Empire collapse, its impact was indelibly linked to social and political pressures, but the brutal combination of these forces cannot be ignored. That is why military experts today talk about climate change as a threat multiplier. Uh, now entering its second decade, the Syrian war has driven over 13 million people from their homes. Um, all right, so what are the lessons for today and the future we can learn from the collapse of the Ottoman Empire? The Mediterranean region may be particularly prone to the negative effects of global warming, uh, but these two stories are far from isolated cases. And uh, have you seen the some of the temperature forecast for uh, the Mediterranean this summer? Good Lord, I, if 
feel like Ithaca, New York is bad. Anyway, as Earth's temperatures rise, the climate will increasingly hamper human affairs, exacerbating conflict and driving migration in recent years, low-lying countries such as Bangladesh have been devastated by flooding while drought has upended lives in the Horn of Africa and Central America, sending large numbers of migrants into other countries. Do you think so? Mediterranean history offers three important lessons for addressing current global environmental issues. First, negative effects of climate change fall disproportionately on poor and marginalized individuals, those least able to respond and adapt. Second, environmental challenges tend to hit hardest when combined with social forces and the two are often indistinguishably connected. Third, climate change has the potential to prompt migration and resettlement, spur violence, unseat regimes, and dramatically transform human societies throughout the world. Climate change ultimately will affect everyone in dramatic, distressing, and unforeseen ways. As we contemplate our future, there is much we can learn from our past, which is what John Michael Greer was saying. Uh, learn how to hoe and grow vegetables or die. Although, if you're trying to uh, grow vegetables where it's a hundred, where you know, in a wet bulb uh, temperature, good luck, you're going to die anyway. But of course, we all know the techno fix to uh, solving global warming, you know, keeping all of this violence and wars and all of that from breaking out, obviously. What we need is a little bit of solar engineering. Solo, solar geoengineering technology to cool the planet could spark conflict, experts warn. There you go. You know, guys, there's no way out. There is no way out. Uh, and I'm sure this will absolutely get the chemtrail wackos uh, in a celebratory mood right here on Yahoo News, they have a picture of a persistent contrail and, uh, y you know, the famous chemtrails, which we don't use that word on this channel. So they have a picture of what everyone calls a chemtrail. I call them cap trails with the, with the, uh, the tagline under the photo Geoengineering involves spraying chemicals into the atmosphere to cool down the earth. So uh, you better believe that the Alex Jones crowd is going to be holding up this article from Yahoo News with a picture of a chemtrail right there calling it geoengineering involves spraying chemicals into the atmosphere to cool down the earth, which is exactly what it does. Anyway, the, uh, the poor editor who made the uh, reckless decision to run that photo to illustrate this article, probably out of a job right now. All right. Climate geoengineering technologies where particles are sprayed into the stratosphere to deflect Sunlight away from a heating earth could spark conflicts, experts have warned. Without coordinated policies on ge geoengineering, the world, quote, risks more contestation and conflict 
without any mechanism for addressing that at the international level. That was uh, Aaron Sikorsky, Deputy Director of the Washington-based Center for Climate and Security. She said that solar, gener solar geoengineering was a particular worry. Quote, when we ask security professionals what they are worried about, this issue is coming up more and more. The concern is that the science is moving ahead of the rules of the road. Close quote. Do you think so that the science is moving ahead of the rules of the road? Experts from the International Military Council on Climate and Security called for faster action to deal with climate change in a report published on Monday. The report warned, quote, the increasing pace and intensity of climate hazards will strain military and security services around the world as they are called on to respond to climate-driven crises, close quote. So the idea of solar geoengineering, otherwise known as solar radiation management, is controversial, you know, as it is supposed to mimic the world's chilling effects of huge volcanic eruptions. Some scientists have suggested that such technology could be used as a stopgap to reduce temperatures while other measures to limit CO2 emissions are put in place, but others have suggested that when the solar radiation, solar radiation management is withdrawn, it could lead to rapid global warming in a phenomenon known as termination shock. This is a uh, probably a word, a term we will be dealing with in the glossary of the collapse here in a few decades. Termination shock. Termination shock. Yes. Uh, one project investigating the idea by billionaire Microsoft founder Bill Gates and top scientists from Harvard. The researchers believe that a fleet of specially designed aircraft could spray particles into the lower stratosphere to cool down our planet and offset the effects of climate change. The name of this experiment, uh, which I think is cranking up right now, it is called, thank you, Bill Gates teaming up with Harvard with the stratospheric controlled perturbation experiment. Yes, the stratospheric controlled perturbation. I think perturbation implies being out of control. I don't know. Uh, I wish they would say when they're going to crank that up. The researchers, the researchers suggest that jets flying 12 miles up would complete over 60,000 missions in 15 years, starting with a fleet of eight planes and moving up to 100 planes. And then I'm sure the chemtrail wackos are, are going to die laughing at the next sentence when they used a photo of an existing chemtrail and put underneath it that it was a picture of geoengineering spraying chemicals uh, in the atmosphere to cool the planet. But according to Yahoo News, at present there are no aircraft capable of doing this, so they would need to be developed. The researchers previously wrote, quote, dozens of countries would have both the expertise and the money to launch such a program. Around 50 countries have military budgets greater than $3 billion with 30 
greater than six billion dollars and uh, so I, you know it's not that uh, it, it, it's not that expensive to do this okay and if you enjoyed that you might want to check out David Attenborough says climate change is a crime humanity has inflicted on the planet yes there you go but anyway we're going to pass on that and wrap this up to recover from this hot sticky day in upstate New York I'm so glad I am a snowbird uh, heading to New York in the summer to escape the oppressive heat and humidity of Florida once again the joke is on me but I guess I could be in Burlington Vermont or Minneapolis Minnesota where it's even what 10 degrees hotter than it is here so anyway get out there uh, and enjoy whatever you can find to enjoy I would suggest enjoying an ice-cold margarita while you still can bye guys uh, yeah still dog yes we're done you can go back and get and, and get your and get your chippies like that or the chippies are the chippies or not? I think the chippies are going to bed like that. Is that a chippy under or not?